Hey guys, Wolfcore here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy Episode 3. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, I really do appreciate it. And if I could ask you one little favor before we get going with today's episode... Hit the like button. You don't have to, or you hit the dislike button if you really don't like it, but either way, thank you guys. Let's hop into the episode. Let's see, where were we at the end of the last episode? We uh, met a guy at a bar, we got laid, um, got a little bit too drunk, and subsequently hung over. Uh, just wolfed down some breakfast, feeling a lot better, and now we are off to a meeting with Amanda's English teacher, I believe. And I think his name's like Vega or something weird like that. Uh, Ten bucks says he's gay. <laughs> Let's go find out. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas' classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Oh, that reminds me of me back in high school. I was that guy who wore eyeliner. Fun wolf core facts, I know, I know. But yeah, sigh, ugh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega? I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Ugh, fine. Up the stairs and to the left, can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around. Unfortunate, un walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. The hooligan. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh! Lucian, don't you have- of course his name is fucking Lucian. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Ugh, oh, fine, Mr. Vega. Oh! Fucking Lucian. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not- Oh! Going. You must be Wolf. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. All right. Where were we? Now we can. Now who can tell me about the unre uh, unreliability of the narrator in J. D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Um. Room? Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a oh. fart noise. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. Alright, alright, everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit oh. down. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the huh? day. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody oh. listens. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Um, Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Uh, Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Mr. Vega? Hmm. Please, call me Hugo. Hi, Hugo. You're quite the handsome devil, aren't you? Uh, I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Uh, Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk that up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda al this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be uh, wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Well, we did just move. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only the to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, and I wouldn't and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Hey. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Hmm. Yes. 
Hey, ever catch that rye? Oh. Oh, dad jokes. <laughs> yes. Oh, he loved it. Hell yeah. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the out of the school. I still I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well for me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Huh. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. <laughs> so you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? <laughs> no. It was a very productive huh. meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to the, s to the mall food court. Ooh, mall food court. That sounds fun. Does that sound good hmm. to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Because it has Panda Express. And shopping. Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Good compromise. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm -hmm. What? Never mind. <laughs> Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things huh? in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about Aww. anything. I, uh, uh, I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. Oh, kids. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Hmm. Noah. Oh, who's Noah? Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. Do you like Noah? What? What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you Ugh. would. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. Jeez, somebody's... Somebody's wearing her sassy pants today. This is going well. No, it's not. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then! We arrive at the mall. A big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Panda Express! Hell yeah! Language, mm -hmm. Missy. Heck yeah! better. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's a greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? Mm, I love all of these options. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm -hmm. I totally get that. We eat the... We eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent, cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. Huh. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <sighs> <sighs> Which meme? 
Ball? Ball Aww. memes? Amanda sighs deeply and places her head Aww. in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us use have already done the joke <sighs> to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TVs and video games will try to jump in on meme trains. But just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Uh. <laughs> Dad, please. Hmm. <laughs> oh shit, what up? Oh, I love our character, he's awesome. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Want to go to that goth mm -hmm. store? What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment? Oh, Hot Topic! I love shopping at Hot Topic. I mean, I don't buy anything there, but I love going in. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s? Mm -hmm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Yep, that's Hot Topic. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline to yes. the back. There it is! You can see the outline, kinda. <laughs> I'm so proud? Speech. Amanda. Hey! Speech! 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 Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a, an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like this, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and Gore had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which is to this day remains among remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slowly at first, then faster, and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their head. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Oh, hey, chain wallets. What a shock. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in dead goth and beyond. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. My roommate is taking one of his three daily showers. I love it when he does that when I'm recording. All right, so we can peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. Oh, well, dad value. Ooh, ooh, but I do like ironic mugs. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? That's a damn fine point. This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear- whoa, hello. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. <sighs> Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it has clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Oh, jeez. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Uh. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man swirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Uh. Hey, Dad Tron 5000. <laughs> yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy, thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins ah. at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and brings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. Fuck this cashier. What an ass. So what was this guy what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls his eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. 
he's in here all the time. He's obsessed with the Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers is on. <laughs> Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're haunting, they're hunting okay. ghosts. <laughs> also, the trucks are haunted. <laughs> this is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghosts don't done got control of the truck. I can't steer on them. They're damn ice roads. <laughs> Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we are about to die, you. This is art. <laughs> the episode ends, and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Z -z 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 all right, we're sleeping. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So you're excited for the cookout today? Uh, excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Eh. Oh yeah, cooking skills. That's what I'm all about. I see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Mm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Oh. Aw, wallflower. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from that oh. cocoon. That, the social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. <laughs> what? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? It's a good point. You know what? We're gonna... We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in a small cluster. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to the two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Oh. Hello. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Oh. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my oh. eldest. Hi. Hmm. This is Christian and Christy. They're huh? twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Huh. Red rum. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib? Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. It's Mary. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Huh? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Uh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Chris to hmm. bed? I'll have to go look for him. Hmm. What? You'll have to... Hmm. Joseph takes a moment and regains oh. his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Wolf, and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. <laughs> nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> it takes all my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. 
Have you met Matt yet? Nope. Oh. Who? Hey, Matt. Come meet our new neighbors. This is Wolf and Amanda. Oh, hi, Matt. Wow. I like his sleeve. This is Wolf and Amanda. Amanda and I both give him a wave. Oh. Uh, hey, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you two. Matt runs the coffee shop down the street. He bakes a mean carrot cake. Oh. Matt grins sheepishly. <laughs> he also knows everything about music. His rec record collection takes up a whole wall of his house. That's me, the music guy. That's a bit of an understatement. He also used to be in a... Uh, 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 I'm just the music guy. Always stoked to do... Always stoked to discuss music, uh, tunes and stuff. Hey, uh, That's so cool. I love oh. music. Matt's ears seem to perk up. Oh, yeah? What kind of stuff do you listen to? Uh, dad rock. Top tier stuff. Almost exclusively songs about being sad. Uh, top, top, top tier stuff? Only the best tunes can grace my earbuds. Gold diamond eardrum... Eardrum ticklers crafted by the finest soundsmiths. Mm. <laughs> My dad listens to more elevator music than anyone I've ever met. Okay, Amanda. Mm. Hey, man. Sometime you should want to jam out to Muzak, I understand. Oh. Cool. All right. Matt stands there for a second. So. Hey. Right. Cool. Hey, yeah. Well, I'll uh, be making the rounds. Feel free to stop by later. Mm -hmm. Is he as afraid of people as you are? <laughs> he might be. <laughs> wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Oh. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs, Amanda grabs a small paper plate, and immediately, immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Aww. Come on, Dad, who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Huh. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about weather. Aww. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. That plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Oh, it's the coffee guy, or is it, or is he the music guy? Oh dang, Robert's here. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. So we can talk to Robert and Brian, we can talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig, talk to Joseph and Damien, or Burger Time. Um, Robert and Huma, uh, let's talk to Robert and Brian. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. <laughs> Wolf! How the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order at least. Whoa. That's a great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, heck yeah, Brian. Oh boy. Wolf, have you met my... Have you met Robert yet? Uh, yes. I believe we've met. Briefly. <laughs> hey! Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? Uh, how's it going? It's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. Great, look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Hey. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. C cool, that's cool. <laughs> we stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until we gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Sure. Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God. Yeah. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape Dad. buttons. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess, and then we get out of the oh. truck. The imaginary truck? Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive the Arctic Tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? Daisy, I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. 
Although I I'm not blah, 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 although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. <laughs> Wait a second. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. <laughs> it's the best, especially that episode where Callium hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. <laughs> All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Going to keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the, sack, from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. <laughs> okay, but not an actual fire. I like how Robert just dipped out without saying anything. Because we're playing pretend. Yeah. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I skim the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does she, does does he not want to talk? Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert-induced haze. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Whoa. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? Aww. She just kind of keeps to, her to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under the tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to by law. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Gotta uh, go meet some of the other fellas. All right, Brian. Hey, it was great talking to you, bro. Uh, we can go talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. We can talk to Joseph and Damien, or it's burger time. Um, let's talk to Matt, Hugo, mm. and Craig. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art are only only exist because they're they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. That's a good point. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they didn't notice me, Craig. Notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I had no idea what's happening. <laughs> Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more uh, attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other oh. day? Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, little bro? Or aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arm and waves them around. Mm -hmm. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Mm -hmm. Oh, they always are. Hey! But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arm again and waves them around. Oh. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on mm -hmm. you, Dad. How are you settling in? Um, almost done. The new place is perfect. I never get too comfortable. Almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to mm. livable. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. <laughs> yeah, my goal is for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. <laughs> She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Wolf, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to oh. us. Matt, what is what is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Oh. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Oh, that's adorable. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. 
Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. <laughs> hey, Wolf, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen... Carmen Sitta. Car Carmen Sitta. Car Carmen Sitta. Carmen Sitta. Carmen Sitta? Carmen Sitta! <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy and tell. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remind you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? <gasps> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize you were in, we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term Ugh. paper? Ha <laughs> Great seeing you, Amanda. Finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move for me. I'm very proud. Oh. She def she's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Huh? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because he's his eyes go wide. What? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway! Vega, are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. Oh, shit. Hmm. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, hmm. too. Hugo walks back over to us. Practically dragging Ernest behind him. Oh, damn, this kid looks like a shithead. Hmm. Hey, everybody, sorry about that. Wolf, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest! Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure we were just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. <laughs> oh, I don't like this kid. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner with, well, that was, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Ah. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Mm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Yeah, yeah. See? That right there, you can't say that. Oh, no. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do, you, do we get to be cool dads? Oh. I, uh don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads we become the mach the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Harsh. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda! Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. laughing. I see your point. Um... As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure that our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might... But there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens yeah, yeah. don't let us eat up your time wolf go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood all right we're gonna meet everybody talk to joseph and damien i spot joseph chatting with the guy from dead goth and beyond by the grill i wonder what they're talking about i walk over oh. to them so i'm curious can you walk me through why you had your house painted black hmm. <laughs> Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting choice. Uh. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Wolf, I was just having a conversation with Damon here about his aesthetic design, design decisions. 
Damien, re Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical mm. eye. How do you do? I do believe I had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught up in ruse by such a corporate corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth dead goth and beyond uh. very good taste on her part does she partake in the goth lifestyle i think for a second i look over to amanda who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood what hey amanda would you consider yourself goth amanda yells back i wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label but i guess if i had to choose i w would more describe myself as twee hipster with some norm core Leanings. Jesus, I don't know what any of those things are. I'm getting old. Bats are cool, though. <laughs> oh, pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Uh. That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarsh, at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Wow. Yeah. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. My, do you know how to treat... My, do you know how to treat a lady? Huh? Hello, Amanda. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear... Uh, are they speaking in unison? Ah. Oh god, that's creepy. Uh, hey, won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, come play with us forever. Oh god, they're the worst. Guys, guys, enough with this creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Oh. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Oh. Mary Poppins. Mary pops into the conversation, wine in uh. hand. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. Hmm. I think I might have tapped, taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her hmm. wine. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? Uh, you had him a moment hmm. ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass uh. to me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four little... <sighs> Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Oh my god. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> Mary. Huh? Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Oh god, it's fucking Lucian. Oh, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Wolf yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. <laughs> Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yeah. Make that two veggie burgers. Do you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Aye. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Hmm, love tattoos. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Yes. Yup. It wasn't... I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? Ah! What? <laughs> Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. It's just, I thought it looked sick. Oh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. The number carries weight. 
that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Hmm. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work with the greatest of ease. He sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easy, some of easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? No. He works faster now, effortlessly, tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side, one after another. The dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Mm -hmm. You probably don't know this wolf, but Joseph, Joseph's known around for his grillsmanship. He's ungrillievable. <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> I've tried to get on this level, but I just can't catch up. Oh, the dad jokes! Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? Hey. I've never seen him make a mistake. Hey. Oh my god. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> oh god. Please stop. You just have no appreciation for dad jokes, Amanda. All of the children at the but uh, all of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Hey. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Uh -huh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Hmm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Yeah. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dadbook? Dadbook? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. So if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes way over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen, Carmen Sitta and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Good job, Amanda. Oh, we earned an achievement. Welcome to the neighborhood. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. And I think that's where we're going to call this episode for today, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I am loving this game. Loving this game. I've never played a game like this, but I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. I want to actually record another episode, but my throat is quite raw from all this talking and reading aloud. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button for me. It really does help my channel grow. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you wanted to do that too, I'd really appreciate that too. But either way, it's fine. No pressure. And I will see you guys back here with another episode of Dream Daddy sometime in the next week. Bye.